Hello and welcome to episode 27 of the Golden Boots podcast. This is your host, Jorge Gonzalez. Our podcast is brought to you by Top Bin 90, which is our channel. Our podcast is all about soccer, all things soccer. We love soccer. First episode 27, we have Jamie Deluzio. Jamie is originally from Long Island, New York, or how my cousins say it, Long Island. And um, he plays at Davidson University here, in, here locally near Charlotte. Jamie, how are you today, my man? I'm doing well. I'm excited to be on the show. Thank you for having me. Nice, man. It's been a great uh, day in terms of weather in Charlotte, right? Oh, yeah. The weather is uh, always changing here, so we're thankful whenever it's good. <laughs> yeah. Did uh, Was that something that was weird to you when you came from New York here th- to have, like, one day super cold, one day it's, like, really nice? Oh, yeah. It's, it's a drastic change. Kind of in New York, it's, like, it's either cold for a long period of time or hot here. One week it'll be pouring rain. Next week it'll be sunny all week. Week after that, I'll be freezing again. You'll be like, what's <laughs> happening? <laughs> you you got to be here to kind of understand it, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> nice, man. So our podcast, we like to bring on different players and people in the soccer world to kind of share their story. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I kind of uh, grew up in New York, um, Long Island, as you mentioned. I played with BW Gachi growing up. I joined them when I was six years old, kind of playing on like five teams at once when okay. I was really young. But uh, as I got older, BW Gachi formed an academy team. As many players probably know, the academy system is like the big thing now for uh, developing youth players. And I played there up until college where I was fortunate enough to receive a bunch of good offers. And I decided on Davidson for academic, financial, just a, just a bunch of different reasons. And okay. it, it's been an amazing choice and amazing time. Uh, my career started off slow, unfortunate injury freshman year, which is always tough to bounce back from, but uh, bounced back really strong. Um, managed to have a really good sophomore year. Was named captain at the end of the season. Nice. And since then, I've kind of uh, stepped up into my role as a leader and uh, been leading the team since then. Awesome, man. I love that, man. Do you remember like your beginnings of when like you first started realizing, okay, like I, I like playing soccer, like this is my thing. Oh yeah, when I was like five years old, just like I remember, I have vague memory. I like my middle school field, just dribbling around kids, and I'm like, man, I love this. This this is what I want to do the rest of my life. <laughs> That's awesome, man. So, uh, right before going to college, what were some of the things that you were working on, like t- to develop as a player? Yeah, so right before college, I just wanted to become more technical, um, become stronger. Because when you play in the college game, you really have to adapt. A lot of the guys are big, physical; they'll hit you. So I was a really small guy, came in like 135 pounds. I remember my coach freshman year was like, man, you got to get bigger. You got to get bigger. (laughs) Like you're playing against big boys now. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I know. Gained 25 pounds my freshman year. Oh, wow. I just spent my days in the weight room working out to make sure I could uh, be ready for the next level. So I would say that was the biggest adjustment for sure. Okay, nice, man. And uh, in terms of like what, what made you pick Davidson, was it like did you send out videos like what was that process like yeah so I was playing at an uh, academy showcase actually um it was like U16 year and I had a really good game um coach Dalby a former assistant at Davidson noticed me um sent me an email after the showcase just saying you really liked the play I played he loved to stay in contact with me kind of spoke on the phone progressed in talks did the same thing with a few other schools as well and then they uh, put out just a great offer for me. Uh, really enjoyed the coaching, the program, the academics, and just like the family feel of Davidson was unlike anything else. I so love that, man. That's really nice. good. Yeah. For those pe- for people that don't know what an academy showcase is, can explain that to them. A yeah, so um, the academy, as I mentioned, it's kind of like the team you play with growing up. It's the elite of the elite youth players um, kind of try to take all those players and put them in front of U.S. scouts and high exposure, high level coaches. So once a year or twice a year, depending on how your team performed, you'd go to a showcase where you'd play teams from all over the country that were around the same level as you in terms of how you performed in your region. So I we'd play against teams from California, Texas, just new opportunities and college coaches line up the sidelines at those games. They, okay. they know they know the players are going to be there. They're going to be fighting. So um that's basically what a showcase is. You showcase your talents to U.S. national team scouts, college coaches. People are just there to watch you play. Now, obviously, like, ability makes players stand out in these showcases. But what else do you think? What can players do to be more noticed in games like this? Oh, yeah. Outside of ability, you, you can be a leader on the field. Uh, coaches notice that right away. If you're communicating, you're talking, 
and you're fighting. Coach, a lot of co- coaches want to see fight within a player. Mm. How hard you work off the ball. How is your reaction when you lose the ball? Those types of things, they, they make all the difference in the world, whether players know it or not. Yeah, man, a hundred percent. I agree with you. I mean, like, ability is important, but yeah. like, it's not that you don't notice the players that work hard. Like, from like, I guess from a fan perspective, like, you're never gonna notice. I don't know, like a James Milner or Jordan Henderson, right? Like, you're gonna notice the Mbappe's, the Hollands, but like, those guys make such a huge difference, and I think that's something a lot of players lack when they're re- very talented. Yeah, exactly. the The ability to work hard and be a leader is what takes you to the next level, I believe. I love that. So tell us about uh, the soccer culture in New York, man. What is that like? Because it's such a melting pot there. Yeah, New York is New York is awesome. I, I am thankful to have grown up there. And soccer there, it's it's different. Um, it's kind of more, it's it's a way more diverse culture. Um, but it's, it's great. Um, players in New York tend to, like, fight harder like they they (laughs) they fight for their lives they're feisty there is chatter all the time on the field man it is it is different but I love it I think it helps any player grow as a player you're going to come out you're going to step out there you're going to face so many different things every game so many different trash talk this guy's going to say this this guy's going to say this he's going to hit you after the play like you're from New York like it is bitter (laughs) it is hard it it is tough it is tough (laughs) Nice. What was your impressions of uh, Davidson when you first came? Yeah, when I first came to Davidson, I was kind of just uh, amazed at how beautiful it was and how amazing the team was. All the teammates took me in and were really nice to me from the start. I remember the senior captain uh, my freshman year, Matt Renico, was just an amazing leader. Brought me in right away, made me feel confident, step on the field. I was nervous, of course, Uh as I feel like anyone would be stepping into a college program. You're playing with kids four years older than you. Um, Yeah. But they made me feel comfortable right away, and I think that that really helped me. I love I love that. Like, what what are some of the things that you think that you did well that that freshman year? Yeah, so that freshman year, I think I just managed to put my head down and kind of uh, realize that I might not be on the field right now, but it's all about getting better and working hard because it's not going to come easy. You're playing against kids four years older than you. You're not going to walk out on the field and score a hat trick your first game of your college career. Yeah. That's just not how it is. It's, it's tough. It's tough. So I think putting my head down and just working hard, I would stay hours after practice every day, um, just working on my game, working on adjusting to new positions the coach wanted to see me in. Um, I think that made all the difference. Mm, explain that a little bit, adjusting to new positions that your your coach – was that something that you saw during games that your coach said, hey, work on this, or was it something that you picked up? What was that like? Yeah, uh, the coach uh, liked me at winger, um, and I was a uh, center mid – left back my whole life and never even played winger never even thought of myself as a winger but he was like man I see you have potential out there on the left and the right and I was like I got to get out there and work on services finishing like I would just stay after practice trying to improve my craft so that I could play in those positions and uh worked out I'm often on the field now my uh my head coach is still putting me out at winger all the time and okay. I've been starting there a couple of games so it's funny how things come full loop I, I worked hard for it and now it's kind of a comforting position for me. I love that, man, because I think it's important to also have adaptability, right? Like, okay, like you played a certain position, whether it's the six, the eight, the four, the nine, whatever it is, like Mm -hmm. being able to adapt is so important because you never know, like coaches see different things in you than what you see in yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think coaches also love players that can adapt and not complain when their positions are kind of being moved around because the coach has a vision and sometimes he needs to make adjustments on the field, and he loves to have a guy who can play multiple z- positions without complaining. Like against Wake Forest, we step out, top, top team in the country, and coach starts me at left back, um, go to center mid in the end of the first half. By start of second half, I'm playing right mid. End of the second half, I'm playing left mid. I'm just all wow. over the place, but <laughs> it is what it is. I'm not going to complain. I'm there to help the team win, and I'm out there and just enjoying being out there in general. I love that, man, because I think that's the mindset that you need to have, right? Like, you have to know that, like, okay, like, first comes the team, right? Like, if you do well for the team, like, the team will do well for you, if that makes any sense. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a big thing a lot of people always forget. The, the most important thing is always team success. Like, I would take winning a game 1-0 any day of the week in a big game over losing 4-3 and scoring a hat trick. No question. Team success is everything, and that's that's what it's all about. 100%. What was the adjustment like in college, man? Like, explain that a little bit, because I think people have a 
perspective of like, oh, okay, like I'm going to college. I'm a baller because I'm playing soccer. Like people are going to know, oh, that's the soccer guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like it takes a lot of work to play at these levels. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not as easy as it makes it seem, but it's also not as hard as it appears to be. I mean, the classes, it's tough. You got to get through your classes. You really got to be committed to doing your schoolwork in your off time because it will catch up to you. You're, you're going to class. You're going to practice. You got to eat right. You're taking care of so many things at once that it requires a real level of maturity uh, to kind of be a college soccer player. But at the same time, um, it's fun. You got to take your moments and enjoy it. The four years really fly by. I mean, I'm a senior now, as I've mentioned, um, and it flies by, and I've loved every minute of it. It's, it's all about kind of just embracing the grind. I love that, man. That, that, that's really good. I, I think it's important to, to have that kind of perspective. Now, that maturity that, that you have to have, do you feel like you always had that, or was that something that grew? Yeah, absolutely. I did not have it coming into college, <laughs> man. <laughs> I did not have the maturity coming to college. I was not ready for just being committed to the work, the craft that it was necessary to put in, but it comes, it comes. And when players make you feel comfortable, they'll lead you, they'll guide you, the older players, and they'll get you there. That's good, man. I, I think that's important, too, because now that you're, quote unquote, the older player, which I mean, you're just a senior, right? Yeah. Like you kind of take that mindset and instill it into the new freshmen and sophomores, correct? Yeah, absolutely. It's a major leadership role. They're coming to you with questions nonstop. What can I do better here? How can I what class should I take here? All the, all these questions. And you're like, man, I'm the senior now. Now I'm the leader. Like people are looking up to me. But it's it's an important role to be in because Guys really do need guidance and advice in all levels of the game. Nice. I love that. So freshman year's over. You walk into your sophomore year. Talk to us about that. Yeah, man. I mean, my freshman year was tough. Uh, I was going through a lot of stuff. Um, kind of had to just put my head down and work from there. And stepping into sophomore year, I was like, I want to earn my spot in the squad. Like, I, I want to be a starter. Like, I'm committed to that. So I work really, really, really hard day in, day out of this summer. Um, committed to becoming a starter and I get there on preseason I'm not in the starting lineup I'm kind of working hard getting the game um remember one play specifically against I think Belmont Abbey I sprint back like 40 yards defensively win the ball play a through ball and we score a goal and from there my coach keeps me in the game the rest of the game and I'm like I think he noticed uh, I can have an impact on this team and uh next game I step out there starting at left wing and I'm like man, I think, I think I've got this, but that's not where it ends. Uh, it's, I'm a sophomore. I'm taking the spot over a senior temporarily. It's, it's not going to be a walk in the park. I got to keep working, working hard, pushing myself. And I kind of did that and managed to just have a really, really, really good season and contribute to the team's success. I love that, man. I think that's so important. I mean, like the work ethic that you put in, like paid off at that moment. I think people don't realize that like, you're working hard because there's going to be a moment that changes things, right? Like you expect like everybody in life. And I think in success, it's like that. Like you work hard, you expect to get compensated like the next day, like, okay, I did this. And like, it's kind of like when you have like a, a job versus a business, like in a job, like you work for two weeks and you get a check mm -hmm. in a business. Sometimes it takes a lot of effort in the front to see the results. But when the results come, they're usually two, five, ten times as much as the results from from just working, right? Like yeah. for a company. Oh, yeah, I fully agree with that. That was the perfect way to put it. Like the hard work, you don't know when that moment's going to come. It's not going to come quickly, often. You're going to be, you're not even going to know when that moment's there. It's just going to come and happen. You'll be prepared and ready for it if you work hard in the meantime. I love that, man. I, I think that's so important as well, man. Just uh, breaking into the 11, right? Because I, I think people like, it's different like when you're really good in small areas, but then you go to like a D1 college or you go into a system where you're like, whoa, like there's really good players here. What's Give us some more su mindset on breaking into the 11. Yeah, I mean, breaking into 11 is all mindset. It's kind of all just belief in yourself. Like, yeah, you love the guys on the team and you love the other players around you, you know how good they are, but you have to believe yourself that you're also a very, very good player and you're good enough to break into the starting 11. There's a reason the coach saw something in you and brought you to school in the first place. So you need to believe that and take that mindset into every practice, every game. Like, I'm going to leave it all out there because I want to make the 11. And when you're playing at a level like this, there's no, there's no days off. You can't just cruise around a practice or a game you got to show up every day out. So it's kind of about taking the mindset that, like, this could be my last time playing. And 
that mindset really shows now with COVID. <laughs> I think that's like kind of come into hey, play. With that like, is true, man. We get we almost I almost <laughs> didn't get my last college game on the field that I thought I was gonna have twenty five games and now I'm down to just eight, but I'm thankful. I'm thankful and you gotta step out every game like it's your last, yeah. man. It's it, and it, I, it, I think it's it makes it more special knowing that, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's like I'm just so happy to be here and every goal you're like, Man, this this is this is awesome. Like could have been so much worse. Nice. Now was that the year that you got the captaincy? Yeah, so right after sophomore year, I kind of was vocal leader on the field, and I played with a lot of passion. I think the guys saw that in me, so I was named uh, captain that spring. Okay. What does being a vocal leader mean? Explain that a little bit. Yeah, so being a vocal leader It's is not just like, hey, I'm yelling at everybody. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's moments where maybe you do have to get on some players for lack of effort types of things, but you're never getting on guys for, like, missing a pass or something where you know, like, it's not a lack of effort. It's just things that happen. It's actually about being positive and encouraging the guys when those moments happen and getting through tough spells. Being a vocal leader just requires you to, there's going to be moments in the game where you're up against it and it's about communicating with your teammates, being positive and getting through those rough stretches. So I'm like talking all the time in the field, tuck left, tuck right, work hard, drop in, like we got to press all, all those kind of little things on the field. Just got to be a vocal leader. You got to be barking all the time. And, uh, being positive while doing it. Nice. I like that, man. How do you differentiate? Because there's certain players that, like, when you yell at them, it makes them better. But there's also players that when you yell at them, like, it kind of brings their confidence down. So how do you think you play a role in that when, like, you're kind of the vocal leader of the team on the pitch? Oh, yeah, that's absolutely true, first of all. Um, definitely people respond differently to different kinds of interactions with me. Um, so it's important to just be aware of that and know which guys don't like being yelled at so that you don't yell at them. Or maybe if you do have to quickly yell at them because it's an adjustment on the field that needs to be made right away. Cause we know in soccer, things happen in a split second. 100%. Um, you yell at them, you say like, you gotta talk right. Like you gotta do that. Next time the ball goes out of bounds, you just go up to them and have a nice friendly conversation with them. Like, man, I'm not mad at you at all. I just wanted to get you to talk <laughs> right. Like, I love you, bro. Like uh, keep doing what you're doing. Like type of thing. Like y it's all about being positive and, uh, but also being engaged at all times. Yeah, and communication, right? Like, mm -hmm. not just on the pitch, but off the pitch, right? Like, you get to know players because you're building a band of brothers, and you realize, okay, this guy's personality is very different than this guy. This guy likes this kind of thing. He's more quiet. He's more introvert. Oh, this guy's more of an extrovert, right? So, like, I think that's really important in terms of gelling all the communication together. Oh, yeah, that's vital. Like, I know a lot of people play Ultimate Team FIFA 21, and, like, <laughs> yeah. you need the chemistry to yeah. have a good team. I was just about <laughs> to go there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, it's true, though. Like, you step on the field. When I'm stepping out there with my friends this year, I am amazing friends with the freshmen, sophomores, juniors. Like, I feel like I'm fighting with my brothers, my family. So it makes all the difference in the world when you're when you have good chemistry with your teammates, you just know that you could trust in one another in every single moment. And that's what gets you to win championships. I love that, man. Awesome. So tell us now about that junior year, man. You're, you're a captain now. How does, how does the captaincy role, how did you embrace that? What, when you were wearing the captain a uh, band? Yeah, I just kind of embraced it in the best manner I could. I was very confident and happy to be a captain that my teammates saw me as a leader, but I was also humble at the same time. I was a junior captain there's two senior captains. I kind of still had a lot to learn. Like I'm, I'm still young. I'm a very young junior. I was 19 years old and I was learning from my senior captains at the same time that I was a captain myself. So I was just remained humble um, and was always vocal. I, I just kept doing the same things I was doing. I didn't change at all. Um, I managed to just kind of step right in the midfield at that point, my junior year, they put me in the center of midfield and um, managed to just kind of communicate all the time and get it across to my teammates that like, yeah, hey, I'm here for you if we need it. And we're going to, we're going to go out there and win games together. I love that, man. That's important. I think, uh, people sometimes use a title as an excuse for things, right? Mm -hmm. Like you use it. Okay. Like I'm being given more of responsibility. So let me continue to do the good things that I was doing to get here. Right. Exactly. I took it as more of a responsibility. I was like, man, I, I'm not taking this as anything like given to me or handed to me. Now I need to work harder and be better because I'm in a way more important role than I was before. Love that, man. Tell us about playing uh, in the center mid, man. What, what, uh, what are some things that you think you need in order to play that position? Yeah, uh, I think being a center mid, the most important thing is kind of just always being aware of your surroundings. You're right in the middle of the park. 
um, guys are going to be all around you at all times. You always got to be scanning. I found that my sophomore year, the biggest thing I improved into junior year was checking my shoulder at all times. You got to know who's coming to your right, who's coming to your left. You have to get an image of the field before you receive the ball basically every single time or else in the midfield, it's just not going to fly. As well, in the midfield, you're allowed to do enormous amounts of work in the middle. So if you're committed to work rate, it'll pay off big yeah, time. Yeah, I feel like that's the position that, like, it's like nonstop running, man. You're mm -hmm. going up, you're coming back, you're helping the defense, you're assisting. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, my goodness, like, you, you never stop running. Yeah, no, nah, midfield is a nonstop grind. You can't tune out. <laughs> if you tune out, your other teammates are let down. They're not going to have options or they're going to be left to defend and be isolated so it's kind of you got to be fit I, you have to be fit you have to be working hard in the off season to make sure you're fit and ready to go when you step in the game as a center mid i got you now now be honest man as a new yorker do you talk trash on the field <laughs> <laughs> i've i've had a lot of moments where i talk trash on the field um <laughs> But I'm wor I'm working on that. My coaches now actually have to uh, often me and my uh, my roommate who's from Philadelphia we <laughs> we get into <laughs> disputes on the field with the other players. Man, we were always talking trash like, "Hey, we just got you!" Like, get stuck in all the all this good stuff. And <laughs> it's all in the spirit of the nature. I'm never like mad or like trash talking. I'm always just having fun with it. But uh, as a senior captain, as a senior leader, my coach has <laughs> worked on me to uh, stop trash talking and just be focused on committing to just the team and being focused in the game. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I think someone told me that, like, trash talking changes, like, when you're winning versus when you're losing. But honestly, I think, like, it's all the same. Just the level of intensity just changes, right? Like, when you're winning, like, you're talking trash, like, with more intensity, be positively, because yeah. you know you're winning and losing the same thing. Like, get out, get out of my face, right? Yeah, absolutely. When you're, when you're talking trash when you're winning, it's really fun. When you're talking trash when you're losing, it's not as fun. <laughs> yeah. What's been your most memorable game so far? My most memorable game would have to be, um, it would be my sophomore year versus UNC. It wasn't a game that we necessarily played so fantastic in, but we kind of got to step out against the number two team in the country at the time and test ourselves in a big manner. We were at home. We had a full stadium for the first time. It's kind of my first okay. season out Th there. Those pre-COVID days. Right? Yeah, those pre-COVID <laughs> days, man. I miss, I miss those days. So I was just stepping out there against the number two team in the country. I remember they had a big, big time center mid, Mauricio Pineda, who's now actually playing with the U.S. men's national team. And yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone was nervous going into the game. And I was kind of just focused on doing my thing. And I remember I just stepped out there and had probably the best game of my college career. I was just confident on the ball, really comfortable from the start. I uh, was playing center mid and just had a brilliant game. And I, I remember that as my best because I was like, man, I could go out there and compete with these top top two or three teams in the country. I feel like our team could do anything. I love that, man. Do you feel like you you grew, you grow into that role within a game or do you come out into that game like that? It, it's half and half. Like I came out into the game. I was like, I'm confident. Like I can't be scared of these guys. I played against top opponents all the time in New York um, growing up. So I shouldn't play any differently or be afraid. And then when I got in the game, I was like, man, I feel comfortable. I'm good enough to be out here. So it's kind of like a, a medium between those two things, like being confident going in, but also stepping on the field and realizing like while you're doing it, you're like, oh, I could do this all day. Like this is easy. I can pick up the ball and ping it to that side, ping it to this side, tackle this guy. It doesn't matter who they are, what accolades they have. When you're in the moment of the game, things change really quickly. That's it, man. And I think that's – that's easier said than done, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, when you're playing better opponents, subconsciously you just know that, like, these players are better. But at the end of the day, it's still 11 versus 11. That's why, like, you always see surprises in, I don't know, like, the FA Cup or Copa del Rey or, like, mm -hmm. in the Champions League, like, even, like, Porto eliminating Juventus. Like, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's still 11 versus 11. And I think it's so important to believe in yourself. Yeah. And you that's know? why soccer is the beautiful game. Like a group of 11 guys step out there with belief. They could, they could honestly do anything. You could step out against the most talented kids in the country and you could go out there and get a result with 11 hardworking guys that are committed to being on the same page throughout the game. And that's why, that's why soccer is amazing. That's why we all come to love this game. Yeah. Not even that, like it, it just brings everybody together too. like what, it doesn't matter what religion you are. It doesn't matter what color you are. Like when you step on the, t on the field, like, all right, we're about to take this dub. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that's probably the most unique thing about soccer is kind of 
the diversity within it and how no one cares about anything off the field. When you're all together, you're a family. It doesn't matter how you look, how you act, who you are off the field. Man, when you step out there, you're a real family. And uh, that was kind of a big thing in New York. We had one of the most diverse teams out there, Asian, Hispanic, everyone. Everyone was diverse, different types of people, different kinds of people. But when we stepped down the field, we fought like a family together. And like those guys I still talk with today in the group chat nice. when I was 15, 14, 14, 15 year olds old. And they're, they're my best friends and they always will be like fighting with guys like that on the field. Soccer, soccer is amazing. I yeah. love that, man. Now, did you learn any other languages too or no? I picked up a little bit of Spanish. Okay. I, I understand it a good <laughs> amount, but I'm not. Did you just learn the bad words or yeah. did you learn other words? Of course, the bad words <laughs> first. <laughs> but uh, I play a lot of uh, Spanish league back home, uh, okay. kind of in like Sunday leagues and all these kinds of things. So I pick up. I picked up a lot of Spanish. I'm not the most comfortable speaking it, but I fully understand it. Okay. That's awesome, man. So the... It, this uh your junior year you you had a pretty good uh, register of goals and assists correct yeah yeah i did i did talk to us a little bit about that because the position that you're in versus uh you scoring a lot and assisting like that that to me is a little bit interesting why do you think that is yeah i think i just kind of grew to be really confident and uh i got my first goal all on penalty kick and i remember i got my first assist off a corner kick and from there i was like I can impact the team not just on the field as a vocal leader and as a player getting stuck in into tackles, but I could also contribute to goals. And I started gaining confidence in that aspect and kind of the goals and the assists just came. I was picking out passes, trying to be a little more like dangerous with the way I look at the game. I was like, maybe I shouldn't just play the simple pass. I feel like I could hit that next one, that next level pass that leads to a goal. And okay. I started taking that confidence into the game and all of a sudden – assist here goal there I mean my teammates make it easy for me they they get in great spots great runs and I felt like things just kind of came easy after that I love that man how do you handle when you make mistakes yeah so that making mistakes is one of the toughest things in soccer to handle a lot of people can act in poor ways put your hands up look at somebody else try to blame someone else maybe things of that manner but when I make a mistake I always commit to I'm gonna get the ball back like right away I need to focus, find a way to repress the ball within six seconds. It's kind of something we talk about at Davidson and kind of something I've learned growing up. It's it's all about you're going to make a mistake. No one's perfect on the field. Messi, you go watch him play versus PSG today. He misses passes. He misses a penalty kick. Yeah. But he's the best player in the world. 100%. And when you get to that level and you realize you're going to make a mistake, it's okay. If you, no one's mad at you. Like Try the most creative pass if you see it. If not, play simple, but... If you make mistakes, no one's going to be mad at you. Everyone's going to make a mistake. If you make 10 mistakes in a row even, be confident the next time you get the ball and things will work out. Yeah, I think that's so important, man, because I, I feel like a lot of people lose that kind of like when you make one mistake, that kind of like hurts your confidence a little bit. Like people either take it that way or they, like you said, like they blame others. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like continue to believe in yourself, right? Like, okay, make that mistake and move on. Mm -hmm. That's what life is all about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, big example. This this weekend, uh, we stepped out against Wofford. We were down 2-1, 25 minutes left. I missed a penalty kick. I got saved by the keeper. And I was like, man, I could put my head down. For a second, I was like, oh, man, like, that's terrible. I let my team down. I was like, I'm the leader here. Like, I got I to step up and be confident in myself. I missed a penalty. Hey, it happens to everyone. It's a mistake. Um, it got saved. End of the day, we're in this game. Like, we got to focus. I step out there get back to connecting passes, being confident in myself and believing that it's just one mistake and we could get back in the game. We score two goals in the next five minutes and we go on to win the game 3-2. That's and amazing. There we are. <laughs> yeah, like even like those small moments, like soccer is one in the small details, right? Because you could have put your head down. That is so good, man. You could have put your head down and said, okay, it's over. Like, okay, like gone into a negative spiral, but you took it the, the right way. And I think that's so important. It's not always going to happen like that, but the more times you can have that mindset, the better off you'll be. Yeah, and that's something that's just unique about soccer from other sports is kind of you're out on the field for 45 minutes at a time all alone out there. Like you're not stopping every minute for timeouts to speak with the coaches or anything. Like it's all about how you believe in your own head. Your mental strength will get you through so many moments in the game that like it will keep you being an elite soccer player if you can uh, strengthen that aspect of your game. Nice. I love that, man. So your senior year, man, how do, how is your senior year different than all the other years outside of COVID? Because I know that like is a big change. Yeah. So outside of COVID, uh, my senior year has been a lot different in terms of 
you feel like walking around campus, you're like, I'm a senior. Like, th this is crazy. Like, you're about to graduate. You kind of know how important it is to leave a really lasting impact at the school. People look up to you, not just freshmen, but sophomores. People around campus know who you are. You have to always kind of be a role model to everyone else. And as a senior, that's a big role you need to embrace and take. And it comes quickly at you. You're not going to be... I feel like I'm still a sophomore, man. <laughs> yeah. but at the same time, I've embraced the role as a senior and kind of uh, been that role model to guys and realized like this is my last season. I need to perform. I need to step up. I need to get my teammates around me to step up and perform as well because I want to do something big. I want to win a conference championship, something that we haven't done here at Davidson in ages. So it's it's a big it's a big ask, but it's it's a, I love it. I love it. Nice. That's awesome, man. So give us your three keys to being a top college player. Yeah. So the first big is the first big key would be to be a leader. Um, number two would be confidence. Trust yourself. Trust yourself at all times to make the right decisions. Get over mistakes quickly. Like there's a reason you're on the field and playing every day, as I'm sure most people who pursue, co pursue college opportunities are. They're out there playing, practicing every day. Trust yourself. I think that's a big one. And then the third one I would say is, whew, let me think about this one. The third biggest piece of advice for college players would be, whew, I would say to be positive. Being mm. positive can be tough during games. There's never, during a 90-minute soccer game, it's going to get frustrating. It's going to get tough. It's going to be a battle. Be positive. Be positive if you're not on the field. Work hard to get better. Be positive in the weight room to work to get stronger. There is so many ways that being positive can just help you and impact you on and off the field that it's going to make your college experience a lot better and take you to the next level. I love that, man. That is so good. Uh, all those three keys, especially the positivity one, because it's so like our main instinct is just to go negative. Just as pe most people, like, the first thing you do is go negative, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I had spells myself. Of course, I was going negative for moments of the game when you're getting thrashed or you're going down. But I realized that over my years, like, b being positive is everything. It's everything. Love that, man. My last question then to you is, what has soccer taught you about success? Soccer has, in a simple manner, has taught me everything about success. Soccer requires you to get over the toughest spells of your life when you're in game you are going to realize like i'm tired i'm dead out here but we need to push for a win there's gonna be moments where you're tired and dead and you don't want to do any more homework or schoolwork and you got to push there's gonna be moments that are tough in your life where you're gonna really have to overcome obstacles and somewhat win in that aspect and it's kind of that never give up determination has helped me in enormous ways i think there's no bigger translator than sports to real life because you're just facing things and obstacles that you have to overcome that translate in every single type of way yeah man i love that i think that's why like i don't know like when i see people that are in like recruiting jobs or sales jobs or other jobs like people that have like an athletic background like tend to do well a lot because like they understand like the grind you know what i'm saying yeah yeah because the grind is everything like nothing's gonna be handed to you in life it never is i mean maybe some people get handed things here and there but whatever people want to achieve, what you want to achieve the most, it, it always requires a push, a grind to become really successful. And I think sports, especially soccer, teaches you how to get there. I love that, man. Well, Jamie, thank you so much, man, for coming on a new episode today. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank you for having me again.